Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This video is going to be an overview of the bones of the feet and the major joints between them. And so by the end of this video, you should hopefully be able to navigate yourself around the foot and kind of know where you are and what's in that region. So first, to orient you with this picture, so in case you wanted to look down at your own feet in real time to see what you're looking at, uh, we're really looking at a superior view of the left foot. I put a couple lefts down here just so you know. And so the medial side is on this side, so this would actually be where the great toe is, your big toe. And the lateral side's over here, this would be your little toe, also called the digiti quinti. Now we can divide up this foot into three regions. And those are going to be the rear foot, also called the hind foot, the midfoot, and the forefoot. And these are not drawn to scale necessarily, but I think you'll get the idea. So we'll start with the rear foot or the hind foot. They're, they mean the same thing. That's really just composed of two bones. Okay, we have the very large calcaneus and the talus. Now, this picture is from another video, but you can actually see here a lateral view. Here's digit number five. Here's the calcaneus, okay? This part right here is literally the heel that you're putting weight on, okay? Now there's other tissue underneath that to protect the bone, but this is literally your heel. This is the calcaneus. Notice the talus sits on top of that. This bone right here is the talus, and collectively these two bones right here make up the rear foot. And so right here, if we're looking at a superior view of this, we can see the talus sitting on top of the calcaneus. Now one thing that's also useful to know is that the calcaneus not only is inferior to the talus, but it actually juts out pretty far laterally. Okay? Uh, the talus is a little bit more medial. Okay? So if you were looking at just the actual bones here, talus is on top of the calcaneus, but it's a little more medial. Calcaneus is a little more lateral, although the talus sits completely on the calcaneus. Now the joint between the talus and the calcaneus is the subtalar joint. So it could be hard to appreciate here, but if we look at this picture again, this joint right here between the talus superiorly and the calcaneus inferiorly, this is the subtalar joint. That's really one half of the ankle joint. The other half of the ankle joint sits on top of the talus. So the talus actually would be inferior, and then above here would be the tibia and the fibula. We can get an appreciation for that here in this x-ray. So this bone right here, we'll see this in another video, this is our talus and then you can actually see the fibula and the tibia sitting on top of that. This joint would actually be called the talocrural joint. And the talocrural joint and the subtalar joint collectively make up the ankle joint. So in this picture right here, here's the talocrural joint. Right there, there's talocrural. And then right here, this is the subtalar joint. Remember, the subtalar joint is between the talus and the calcaneus right here. Again, notice that it's calcaneus not only is going to jut out a little laterally, but it actually sticks out quite a bit posteriorly as well. Okay, So those two bones collectively make up the rear foot or the hind foot. Okay, What's also worth mentioning is on the lateral side, we'll see this in more detail, much more detail in a future video, you're going to have some ligaments on the lateral side of the ankle. Those are going to be the lateral collateral ligaments. And these ligaments are going to resist inversion, or really varus forces, on the ankle. On the medial side of the ankle, we're going to have the MCLs, medial collateral ligaments, and these are usually just called the deltoid ligaments. These are going to strongly resist eversion, or just valgus forces, on the ankle. Okay? And you can see their individual components here, which we will discuss in much more detail in a future video. So that's your rear foot. Now moving anteriorly, we move into the midfoot region, there are five bones here in the midfoot. Now laterally, we have the cuboid. Now it's useful to know that the cuboid really is the largest bone here in the midfoot region. Okay? It's going to be on the lateral side, and it's going to articulate posteriorly with the calcaneus, and anteriorly with these lateral two metatarsals, metatarsal four and metatarsal five. We'll get into those in a few minutes. So lateral side of the midfoot, pretty simple. Medial side, eh, not so much. Okay, the medial side actually has four of the five bones here. Uh, cuboid's the only one on the lateral side. So when I think of the medial side of the midfoot, I like to think of two rows here. We have a proximal row and a distal row. The proximal row is really just one bone, it's navicular. Okay? Now, it doesn't look like it here, but the navicular 
between the talus and the calcaneus only articulates with the talus. Okay? I really probably could have drawn this out here um, to show you that, but it's important to realize the navicular does actually not articulate with the calcaneus. Now, there is a calcaneonavicular ligament, but that's not a direct articulation. The navicular does not articulate directly with the calcaneus. The navicular articulates with the cuboid, the three cuneiforms, and the talus, not the calcaneus. Uh, the cuboid articulates with the navicular, the lateral cuneiform, and the calcaneus. So if you're trying to remember which of these bones in the midfoot, cuboid or navicular, articulates with the calcaneus and the talus, an easy way to remember this is that the cuboid goes with the calcaneus. C and C, cuboid calcaneus. That leaves the only other two, navicular and talus. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. Now for the distal row, of the midfoot, we have the three cuneiform bones, or cuneiform, depending on how you want to pronounce that, and there's three of them, okay? So this one out here, that's more medial, that's going to articulate with the first metatarsal, that's your first cuneiform, or sometimes just the medial cuneiform. The one in the middle, right here, this would actually be the second cuneiform, or sometimes called the intermediate cuneiform, or middle cuneiform. Uh, this one articulates mainly with metatarsal two, and then we have the third cuneiform, also called lateral cuneiform, this one articulates mainly with metatarsal three. Now, you can obviously make arguments that they articulate with other things. For example, the first cuneiform would articulate with the intermediate cuneiform, navicular, and metatarsal one. The intermediate cuneiform would articulate with both other cuneiforms, metatarsal two and the navicular, and you can go on and on like this. So just remember that cuboid articulates with calcaneus, and navicular only articulates with the talus. Okay, so there's our midfoot. Now before we dive into the forefoot region, uh, let's actually look at the joint that connects the midfoot to the rear foot. This is called the transverse tarsal joint, also called the mid-tarsal joint, also called the show part joint. You should be aware of those three pieces of terminology and also understand that this is a composite joint. So the transverse tarsal joint is actually not just one joint, it's actually two joints. Um, and they both collectively make up the transverse tarsal joint. It has a medial part, and it has a lateral part, and you could probably guess, based on what we said articulates with what, what those are. What would be the lateral half of the transverse tarsal joint? What bones are, are articulating there? Cuboid and calcaneus. So this lateral part would be the calcaneocuboid joint. What about the medial part? What two bones articulate? Well, talus, and navicular. So the medial part would actually be the talonavicular joint. So we can say that the transverse tarsal joint is composite and it's made up of the lateral part which is the calcaneocuboid joint and the medial part which is the talonavicular joint. Okay? But understand that this is actually a composite joint. It's two separate joints right here that, are, that connect the rear foot to the midfoot. Alright, now let's dive into the forefoot. So the forefoot uh, is starting with the metatarsals and it goes out to the ends, the distal phalanges. So this region is of course the metatarsals. The metatarsals connect some of the tarsals to the phalanges. Okay? Every digit has one metatarsal. Okay? When we get to the phalanges, that will change a little bit. They don't all have the same number nor the same size. But generally speaking, all the metatarsals are around the same size, and each digit has one of them. And the way that these are numbered is starting with the great toe, or the big toe, also called the hallux. So the hallux, your big toe, is digit number one in the foot. Now, in your hands, the, your thumb, or the pollux, is also digit number one, but there's one major difference that you need to uh, remember. So look down at your foot. Look at your big toe. Is it medial or lateral in anatomical position? Well, it's medial. Okay. With your hands, is your thumb medial or lateral in anatomical position? Your thumb is lateral. So just remember that when you're looking at anatomical position and you're numbering these digits, the thumb for the hand and the big toe for your foot are always number one, but the medial and lateral aspects change depending on if you're looking at the hand or the foot. Okay, so just, just a word of the wise there. But again, when you're numbering the metatarsals and digits in general, the great toe is number one. So this would be metatarsal one, this would be metatarsal five. It's also worth mentioning here that metatarsals four and five are going to articulate with the cuboid proximally. 
Metatarsal 1 articulates with cuneiform 1, or the first cuneiform, or medial cuneiform. Metatarsal 2 is going to articulate with the intermediate cuneiform. Metatarsal 3 is going to interact with the lateral, or third cuneiform. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. Going further into the forefoot, we actually reach the uh, phalanges. Now, when we're looking at these, the first digit only has two phalanges. That means the hallux only has two. That's going to be the proximal phalanx and the distal phalanx. So only two for the great toe. All the other digits, two through five, have three phalanges. Okay, so we'll look at the fifth digit here. This is digiti quinti. That's the specific name of digit five in the foot. We have a proximal phalanx. Now we have an intermediate phalanx, and we have a distal phalanx. We can also talk about the joints between the phalanges. So this works for digits two through five, this naming system. Okay? So let's look at the joint between the proximal phalanx and the intermediate phalanx. Okay? This joint is called the proximal interphalangeal joint, also called the PIP joint. Okay? It's interphalangeal because it's between two phalanges, the proximal phalanx and the intermediate phalanx. And you've probably also heard this when I've been talking, when you're talking about multiple phalanges, phalanges is plural, one individually is a phalanx, okay? But this is the proximal one, but there's also a distal one, because now we have a joint between the intermediate phalanx and the distal phalanx. That's the distal interphalangeal joint, or the DIP joint, okay? Digits two through five all have a a DIP, a distal interphalangeal joint, and they all have a PIP, a proximal interphalangeal joint. But notice that the sizes of the phalanges does differ. And I'm, there's going to be, again, lots of differences here. I mainly tried to reflect it in the distal phalanx of each, but again, they're all going to have these two joints. That changes when we're looking at the hallux. Okay? The reason we have a proximal and distal interphalangeal joint with these digits is because we have three phalanges. There's going to be two joints, therefore. Here we only have two phalanges, a proximal phalanx and a distal phalanx. So it wouldn't make sense to say proximal interphalangeal joint because that would imply there's a distal one also. So when we talk about the hallux, we just say an interphalangeal joint because there's only one of them for the hallux, just between the proximal phalanx and the distal phalanx. So it's just the interphalangeal joint. And when you talk about these joints, you should also specify the digit. Is it digit 1, is it 2, or is it 5? Okay, so make sure you specify the digit. Okay? Even though interphalangeal joint does automatically specify the hallux. Okay? But then again, does it specify the hand or the foot? So you need to make sure you're very specific. Now, joints between the metatarsals and the proximal phalanges. Every digit has one of these, and this is called the metatarsal phalangeal joint, or MTP joint. Okay? This makes sense. It's between the metatarsal and the proximal phalanx, so the MTP joint. Every digit has an MTP joint. All right? And then finally, we'll look at this joint uh, between the forefoot and the midfoot. Now, this one's not very complicated. Okay? It's the tarsometatarsal joint or TMT joint, also called the Liz Franck joint. You can probably guess here, based on what we've talked about already, what joints it's composed of. Okay? This is not just one joint, it's a set of joints. Okay? We can talk about the joint between the cuboid and metatarsal 5, cuboid and metatarsal 4, lateral or third cuneiform and metatarsal 3, intermediate cuneiform and metatarsal 2, first cuneiform or medial cuneiform and metatarsal 1. Every one of these joints collectively make up the TMT joint. Okay? So just like the transverse tarsal joint, the tarsometatarsal joint is a composite joint. Right? Now, one thing that's easy to get confused if you're not being very careful and reading a question quickly is getting confused the tarsometatarsal joint and the transverse tarsal joint. Okay? Think about what you're looking at before you answer the question. Okay? Transverse tarsal joint. That would imply it's between tarsals. Okay? It's transverse. It's cutting the tarsals in half. So that would have to be the joint between the midfoot and the rear foot. Think about it. What is the transverse tarsal joint between? You've got the cuboid and the calcaneus, which are both tarsals, and navicular and talus, which are both tarsals. It's therefore transverse tarsal or mid-tarsal. Now, show part, you kind of just have to memorize that. Okay? There's no real good way to remember that uh, based on this rule. 
But again, remember transverse tarsal is between tarsals. Tarsal metatarsal has to be between some tarsals and some metatarsals, right? It's between the cuboid and these lateral two metatarsals, and the cuneiforms, which are tarsals, and the first three metatarsals. And you can do the same kind of rules up here, metatarsophalangeal. It's between a metatarsal and a phalanx. So just really carefully look at what you're answering before you answer it, okay? Because these names are very strategic. They tell you what you're looking at. The major trick here is just to remember the tarsals. This is the most confusing part. But hopefully this video gave you a good base understanding of all the bones of the foot and these joints. And all these little details here, and this other stuff, we'll hit those individually in more detail in the coming videos after this. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.